Hey everyone, I'm Jack, and here's a September update of my cacti and succulent collection. So it's a balmy 79.5 degrees here on the grow rack. Hard to believe we're about a month away from our first frost. But so I can show these a little bit better, let me get them over on the table and we'll get started with the update. So I figured this would be a little bit easier to show on this table. And what I'll do is I'll show you by shelf. And so we'll start with the top shelf. And here we go in one, two, three. There we go. Now I can show them a little bit easier. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on these. I just want to kind of show you real quick uh, how everything's looking. And I will use my little pointer that appears in a lot of my videos. This is an aloe. It's a blue elf. And since bringing it home from the store, the color has really turned into kind of a steel blue um, with a little bit of red highlights here. It looks really nice. It's got a baby coming out right here on the side and eventually I can separate that and have another blue elf aloe which is very very cool. This here is the old man of the Andes and there is something going on with this cactus. It's kind of browning up here on the side. I'm not quite sure if I didn't give it enough water or if I gave it too much water. Eventually I think I'm going to have to intervene and and cut it right here and try and reroute it. I have a feeling that it's not doing very well. Um, it sort of looks like on the bottom portion that it's dying and I'm not quite sure about it. So I think I'm gonna have to intervene on this one. Next to that is this Mammillaria spinosissima and it's doing really well. It's getting a little bit tall and a little bit wiggly um, I think it's sort of stretching out towards the light um, or it's just growing tall and doing well like it's supposed to do. Had some flowers on it. I don't know. You probably can't see them, but they were all kind of all over here. Real tiny little flowers, real pretty red, kind of a pinkish red. Um, and now, you know, those have gone. I missed my window to get those pollinated. Um, I was going to try and get some seeds from them, but uh, Life kind of took over and I didn't have time and sort of caught a glimpse of them flowering and that was about all for that unfortunately, but it's doing really well, good color on it and I'm pretty happy with that. Next to that is this Kalanchoe Blasfeldiana, the one that I know you've seen in videos before uh, with the yellow flowers and this one is dropping some of the leaves, um, but it has good growth back here in the back. And all in all, it's doing pretty well. I'm pretty happy with that. Next to that is a variety of cactus that I don't know the name of. They were given to me, uh, this along with some other ones, by a person that I met in the garden center of a big box store. We struck up a conversation and that sort of led to her offering to give me some of her collection. Uh, she was getting ready to move to Texas just wanted to be kind and pass it pass some of these forward to me so that's really cool they're doing really well um, I repotted them they were kind of all clumped together and I separated them into here and they're doing really well coming up on the next row is an Apuntia prickly pear this was one that I replanted um, it was a pad given to me by a friend and it's doing really well it's got Move it over here so you can see it's got a baby pad that I planted and then off of that baby are two little pads coming up and they're doing really well. This one here and let me grab these tongs and I'll show you this little pad here. Oops. This little baby was back here on the top right here and I just took some scissors, put some alcohol on them to kind of sanitize them and then just cut this little baby off. It's been sitting on the shelf for about a week to get a callus and which that has now so I'm going to put this in a pot and get it to root. Next to that is an astrophytum and 
and it's doing really well. It had a straw flower on it that I take, had taken off and repotted it, doing pretty well, looking good. On the other side of it is another unknown. Uh, I don't really, I've seen these before, but I can't remember the name. Um, if somebody watching this knows the name, if you'd put that down in the comments, that'd be great. Um, this was one that was with all the other ones that the lady at the big box store gave me. I repotted it and it's doing pretty well. Um, it hasn't really grown a whole lot and I think I'm still trying to figure out the lighting for it. I think I might be giving it too much or too little and I'm not quite sure. So I need to find out the name and maybe figure out how to take a little bit better care of this one. Next to that one is another aloe. This is Walsley's Blue and the color on this really snapped up from the store. It's got some really nice red highlights in here, kind of pinkish red and the blue is really uh, starting to show kind of a steel blue and doing really well, growing great. And then on the row in front of it is the Apuntia. This is the Caribbean Apuntia. A lot of little babies coming up here and there's some up here, one right here, doing pretty well. It's got a little bit of fading in the color right here and I think this one too, I'm sort of struggling to find the right light. I've moved it around a couple times to see if I can get it to green up a little bit more and there's some wrinkles here and there that looks like it's either getting too much or too little water. So this one's a little bit tricky. I'm trying to figure this one out um, as well as this one here um, for the lighting and the water. Coming down here, this little one right here is the Harmsii that I showed the intervention where I kind of beheaded it and planted it. Um, it's about three weeks since I've done that, if I remember correctly. When I first did it, I laid it in a dish with some soil, just kind of laid it on its side, and about a week and a half, two weeks later, it sprouted some roots. Uh, so I put it in this pot, and I think it's doing pretty well. I can't quite tell if it's growing yet. I'm afraid to touch it. I don't want to pull it out of the soil just to check the roots, but it looks like it was successful. I did get some roots and I'm trying to kind of grow this out in here. Next to that is an Echinocerius rigidissimus rubus spinus. Man, that is hard to say. It is otherwise known as a rainbow hedgehog cactus. Doing really well. It's got great color on the top, very red, pinkish red, um, and just looking really good. It's, it's a little bit kind of bulbous from about here up. I think it might be sort of stretching to the light, but all in all, I think it looks really good. Next to that is a Kalanchoe. It's um, unfortunately one that I don't remember which Kalanchoe it is, um, but it's doing pretty well and got a lot of good growth and some good color on it. So I'm hoping to get this a little bit bigger. To the right of that is the Tanzanian zipper plant, otherwise known as a Euphorbia anapila. Anaplia. All these names are really hard to say. <laughs> uh, the Tanzanian zipper plant, there's a little baby right here. Really cute, and this one's doing really well. I'm really pleased with that. Uh, there were some babies when I transplanted it. I repotted those, and I'll show you those in just a second. In front of that is a Osteocephalocerus estevisii, and this one's doing really well. When I transplanted it, I kind of had to choose whether to separate these. I decided to leave them together. I like the way it looked, kind of clumped up, um, so I left them like that. In front of it is an aloe, uh, beautiful aloe. This was one in the group of the lady that gave me from the big box store. This one's looking really well. Got some great color on it, and I'm really happy with that. Coming down here is another uh, the Kalanchoe that I showed you back here. This is another one, um, a little bit smaller, doing pretty well. It's got some good growth on it. Next to that is a new addition. This is a Gabanium Despair, or Gibanium, not quite sure how you say that. Uh, at first I thought it was a split rock, um, but it appears to not be a split rock and I had to look up on the internet what it was and how to take care of it. It turns out it is a winter grower, uh, meaning that the growth time for it is during the cold in the winter, and 
this one's going to be a little bit tricky, I think, because I'm going to have to try and not water it during the summer and the spring. You're only supposed to water it in the growth season, which is in the winter. And like I showed at the start of this, it's 79 degrees on the grow rack. And I'm going to have to start trying to get these a little bit colder um, and induce the dormancy in the cacti and then get this one to start growing. But I thought it was really cool, so I figured I would give it a try. Hopefully it's a success. Next to that is a Tanzanian zipper. This is one of the little babies that I separated from the mother. Repotted it. It's doing very well. It's got some nice color and some growth here on the top. Next to that one is an Apuntia angel's wing. This was one that I got a while ago and I need to transplant it. One of the pads here is a little bit droopy and kind of wiggly. I think that would be a good candidate to clip off, let it callus and repot. This giant thing here that you see is a creeping Charlie. The leaves here got kind of bleached out. I had it a little bit too close to the intense light so I had to kind of move it and then all this has greened up as a result. It was all pale. This one's growing really well. I guess these are pretty easy to grow. Um, they'll even grow in, you know, like a jar of water. So uh, I just got this. Uh, it kind of reminded me of my mom. She used to have creeping Charlies around all the time. And I just got a cutting and planted it up and it's doing really well. Coming down here in the front is another unknown. This was in the group of ones that lady gave me. Zoom in here so you can see and it's got tiny little spines on it. It's super cute. Um, looks like it's kind of struggling a little bit. I'm not quite sure um, what to do about this as far as how to take care of it. I might have it in the wrong light or giving it too much or too little water. If anybody knows the name of this, if you could put that down below, that'd be great. I can't seem to find the name of it. Next to that is another zipper plant baby doing well got some good color and growth here on the top and it's sort of kind of spiraling as it grows which is really cool and this one's doing very well separated from the mom and then next to that is a cutting from a dragon fruit that I have outside I just took some scissors alcohol them and just kind of chopped off this piece right here uh, let it callous for a day or two and then put it in some soil and sprouted this arm right here and it's doing really well. So that's all the top rack. Let me put these back up on the shelf and then I'll show you the next shelf. Okay, here is the second shelf that has kind of turned into the propagation shelf. <laughs> so here is a Kalanchoe longiflora cosiana, and it is very tall stretching out towards the light. A lot of these leaves are kind of drying up and falling off. Um, I can't quite seem to get this one to do anything. It is growing. It's got some aerial roots here, um, but it's, for the most part, it's stretched out. I think I may have to behead it and start over. Um, I was hoping to get this one to bloom, but it never has. So all it's sort of doing is stretching out. This might be one that does better outside and instead of being under the lights like it is. Next to that is an aloe. This is a mini bell, and it's doing really well, kind of stacking up on top of each other as it grows. Um, some of the ridges here, the, the very outside parts are turning red, kind of a pinkish red. New growth here in the center, doing really well. Next to that, sort of hidden behind all these, is one that has showed up in a couple of videos. It's a little bit tall and stretchy has some babies as well. Um, I'm going to have to intervene on this one, I think, behead it. Next to that one is an Echeveria ramelette, and it's got two babies coming off of it, looking really good. I'm going to have to probably separate those babies before too long so that I can get a couple more plants off of it. Next to that is a Pearl von Nuremberg that looks really nice. Um, it's a little bit tall and leggy, uh, but not too very bad. It's got some aerial roots coming down. Um, this is a really nice looking Pearl von Nuremberg. Over next to that is an Ogre Ears, doing really well. It's got two nice little stalks that have uh, clustered at the top and they just keep sending out new little ears. In front of that is a Haworthia cuspidata. Let me get my pointer back here. 
Um, again, it's blooming like the other times that it has over and over and over, um, growing outwardly, you know, in different little clumps here, looking really good. I've gotten three babies off of it that will come up to um, on the front of the table. Down, probably tucked here, you can't really see, is a Pearl von Nuremberg baby. And it looks pretty well. They take a long time to get big, I've discovered. Um, I didn't put the date when I propagated these, but it has been a really long time to get to this size. Um, it's probably about as big around as a nickel. And yeah, they're just slow growers. Um, I have another pot in front. Let me lift up so you can see. It's got three of them in there. Doing well, they're just, they're very slow growers. Next to that one here is, where's my pointer? Right here is another unnamed one. I don't know what this is, unfortunately. It's got a couple of babies that have sprouted from some of the leaves that have fallen off. So if you happen to know what that is, if you'd let me know down below, that'd be fantastic. Next to that one is a Pearl von Nuremberg. It is pretty tall, stretched out, aerial roots, um, good color. Uh, the size is really nice. Here we have a, I think this is a jelly bean. I think it's called jelly bean. I'm not quite sure. Um, it was in the package of the lady that I saw at the big box store. Next to that, down here, I'll have to kind of pick up to show you, are some jade propagations that I did. Very tiny, apparently they're slow growers. And then these two, I think are babies from this one here that I'm not quite sure what it is. I think that's what these are. On the next row here is another unnamed, unknown. Um, doing pretty well. It was one that I had outside and quickly found out that it I didn't, it didn't like to be where I had it outside, so I brought it in and um, doing well. It's, it's growing, it's got some good color, good growth on the top. Uh, I just unfortunately don't know what it is. And these two, they are Aloe Oik, O-I-K is the name. I had never seen them before and they were being neglected at the big box store. Um, the soil is super dry. You can see here that I can just pick it right up out of the pot. Definitely needs to be transplanted, um, getting into some better soil. Apparently under the right light and better conditions, the edges of these get really bright red. Um, let me pick one up and get it closer so you can see. Here's kind of a view from the top. But all along these ridges here get super red when it gets better light. There's a person that watches my channel. I'm going to send one of these to you. This person probably doesn't want to be named. Uh, they had mentioned to me that they were gonna send me a cutting, um, but they did not want me to say who it was. And so if you're watching, I'm gonna send one of these to you. It is an aloe oik, and I'm sending it to you as a thank you for what you're sending me. I'm still watching the mail for that. I'm very excited. Um, so expect this to come to you as a thank you for what you've given to me. Behind it, let me adjust this a little bit so you can see, is the Echeveria harmsii. You saw the video where I beheaded it and took some leaves and tried to get those to propagate. Um, I showed you the beheaded part on the first shelf took root and this one here has a little tiny growth coming out right here just below where I beheaded it and I'm pretty excited to see that. Next to that here are some firestorm, sedum firestorm leaves that I've been trying to propagate and I've been trying to get these to grow for a really long time. I bought the sedum last year. I don't remember the exact month um, but I know for sure it's a year and this is about as big as they got. So they're not very big, apparently a slow grower, but they are growing. And I think eventually that's gonna turn into something that I can transplant and get another firestorm out of. Here is another unknown. It was one in that package from the lady at the big box store. Doing pretty well, um, kind of a slow grower, uh, but doing well, good color on it. 
And this one here is also unknown and it was in the package from the lady. Doing well, got some good color. Um, if anybody happens to know what this is, if you could let me know, that would be great. I can't seem to find what that is. Right here in the front is a jade. And I originally was gonna try and do like a little bonsai with it. Um, got sort of caught up in life and didn't print it the way it was supposed to. Uh, but now it's taken on this pretty interesting shape. Growing up, uh, kind of stacking on top of itself. Um, looking good, I think I could cut it and it would probably branch out from there. Not quite sure what I want to do with it yet. Um, the bottom is getting some good size on the stock, so I'm pretty happy with that. Next to it, right here, are some propagations from the jade that I was trying to get going. Slow growing, but looking pretty well, sort of stacking on top of each other here. And um, eventually I think I can plant these out and get some more jade plants. Turn this past the oiks. Unknown, I don't know what this is. Um, I believe this one was a leaf that I found at a uh, big box store kind of laying on one of the trays and it was actually starting to form. So I just kind of picked it up, stuck it in my pocket and planted it. And now it's doing pretty well. This one here is another unknown. It was in the package from the lady. Um, doing okay. It's, um, it's growing. It's not growing real well. Uh, I don't know what it is, so I don't really know for sure what it requires, but I'm just trying to figure that out. Down here in the front are three um, Haworthias that came from the Cuspidata that I showed you that's flowering. These are three babies that I took off, and this one is doing the best has quite a lot of new growth on it. Um, this one's doing fairly well, and then this poor little baby here is trying, um, but it's doing okay, all three of them are. So the Haworthia cuspidatas definitely produce a lot of babies, um, so that's kind of a cool way to get more Haworthias off your plant. Coming down here towards the front, and let me move this out of the way are two other unknowns. I don't know what these are. These were also at a in a garden center, kind of sitting in the tray, starting to show some life. So I took them, stuck them in some soil, and they're doing pretty well. They're very small and a little bit bleached out. I think they're getting too much light, and they're just not happy with where they are. So I may have to move that back away from the center of the light um, just to get them to kind of grow a little bit more. Next to that is a Echeveria Chroma. It's doing really well, got some good color on it. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. This leaf here that I keep moving is from this monster here. This is a Salinocerius anthonianus, and it is taking over the shelf. So it comes here and hangs way down the table and it's looking okay. I think it needs to go into a bigger pot and ultimately I think these grow better outside. So I think I need to get it out from under the light and put it in a better pot and get it outside. So that is the second shelf. Let me put these up and I will show you ultimately what's gonna be the fourth shelf. The third shelf is just got a bunch of junk in it. Here's the bottom shelf of the grow rack and this one here is an unknown. I showed on the second shelf, kind of a smaller variety of this. Um, but here is a little bit bigger one, doing a little bit better than the smaller one. This one here, I don't think I've ever shown this one. This is a golden barrel cactus, still in its original pot. I need to transplant it. Oh, I'm just afraid to do it because dormancy is coming up. So I think I may let it stay in this a little bit longer and then um, transplant it in the spring. Here's a Silver Arrows doing really well, getting lots of little fuzzies on it. Let me bring that up so you can see. Lots of fuzzies, lots of uh, arrows here. Looking really good. I'm pretty happy with the way this one has turned out. This one right here is an old lady cactus. 
It is a Mammalaria Pahiana. Pahaniana, however you say that. That is really hard to say. Let me bring that up. It is a uh, Haha Niana. Mammalaria Haha Niana. Kind of fun to say. Or Ha Niana. Anyway, that's an old lady cactus doing really well in its original pot, um, which is still a pretty good size for it. So I'm just going to leave it in there for now. Here's the Mammalaria picanaensis, the bristle brush cactus that I showed I transplanted. And now this one here has drooped over quite a bit. So I think what's happening is it's stretching out to the light. And I don't think it likes that. So I think I'm going to have to intervene on this um, probably next spring. I'm going to let it go dormant in this pot and take a chance that this is going to make it through. And I may have to kind of cut it here and try and reroot this because eventually this is just going to break off right here where it's folded over. Poor little thing, um, but doing really well. Other than that, you know, lots of new growth, uh, lots of good color. Uh, I just don't think it likes the light. It might need more intense light than I'm providing. Down here in the front are four babies from the Kalanchoe donkey ears. And here's what I've discovered about Kalanchoe donkey ears. They do not like to be indoors. So originally, you know, you saw the video where I planted it and then I did updates um, and I accidentally beheaded one. And I showed the powder that builds up on the leaves, which these are now doing that as well. Uh, I had these babies indoors and I had them in what I thought was a good lighting situation and a watering regimen, um, but they don't like to be indoors. So I don't know if it's too cold for them or if they don't like artificial light, um, but I do have a baby from the original plant that has now deceased, uh, but I have a baby outdoors that was a tiny little baby that I stuck in a potted plant that was kind of shaded. It was a Drakinia that was shading this baby that's outside. And that plant is doing really well. It's about four to five inches, maybe six inches tall. I would show you, but it's currently pouring down rain and I can't go outside. I'm kind of housebound today, um, but it's doing really well. And it's got phenomenal color, like a, the original mom when I brought it home from the store. So I think they are a strictly outdoor plant. Um, the conditions for this one is sort of shaded. I don't think they like direct sunlight because it does change the color, makes them more red. I think I showed that in the video. Um, so I've, I finally, after the longest time, learned these don't like to be indoors. So these are all the plants, uh, not these, but all the ones I've shown you are all the ones on the grow rack and they're all doing very well. Some of them are, um, you know, over a year old, still doing great. Some of them need intervention like this bristle brush um, and some aren't doing so great. And I think that just comes with uh, growing the plants and maybe, maybe growing them indoors kind of heightens, you know, your, your chance of failure. I think I've had more success than more failure. I have a couple more on the table that served as my overwintering table, um, when it, you know the south-facing window. Let me bring those to the table, and I'll show you those, and that'll kind of conclude this update. Here are the plants on the south-facing window, and let me bring this up so you can see. You're going to see my very well-constructed backdrop. It's held on with a clothespin to the curtain. <laughs> so this is a Euphorbia milii chronos. Zoom in here so you can see. I've shown this one. This one just keeps blooming and blooming and blooming. Very, very prolific. And in a window now that doesn't get a whole lot of light because the sun is kind of directly above our house. I'm soon going to be shifting south and it will actually get a little bit more light. But we're actually moving. We are going to, in about 20 days, be moving. So I'm a little afraid for this one here because it's done so well in its location that I'll have to try and duplicate it in our new place. But I'm going to worry about that when that happens. Coming down here is a Sansilveria. And this one here, where's my pointer? Gotta have my pointer. 
This one here has done very well. It sent up these big, long leaves um, from the back behind it is, you know, where they're popped up. This one was kind of a slow starter. I got it as a gift, put it in a pot, and it sort of just didn't do anything, but now has done really well. So I'm pretty happy about that. And you can see here that, here's my awesome backdrop again. This one is not a succulent, it's a ponytail palm. Let's see if I can go up, show you as tall as it is. There's my light. And this up here is just so cool looking. Doing very well um, in a nice old big clay pot that I had laying around. Saw this in the store and I just I couldn't resist it even though it's not a cacti or succulent, um, but I had to have it. So doing well. And down here, let me come back here a little bit, are some Euphorbia milii, crown of thorns, here, 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 and here. And they are kind of hanging on. They don't like to be, I think, indoors. I think that's their problem. I think these might want to be outdoors in the sun. Um, they're sort of stretched out and there is new growth on them, but there's a lot of kind of death happening. Uh, the leaves and the flowers, um, you know, they dry up and they fall off. It is flowering, um, but I think that's taking a lot of energy from them. I think these are another plant that should probably be grown outdoors and not under artificial lights. And let me move this one here. And here is a, another sense of area sort of a variegated one. And let me zoom in so you can see, it has a baby coming up. So this thing has sat in this pot for months and I thought it was actually dead. I sort of one day took and, and tugged on it and there was some resistance so I knew it was rooted. And sort of just recently, this baby has popped up. So there's, it's finally showing life and I'm excited about that. It is a slow grower and I almost counted it as dead, uh, but it is not. Well, I hope you enjoyed this update video. If you did, click that thumbs up for me, subscribe to see more videos, and until the next time, thanks for watching.